let's talk about modern telescopes today. This was the largest telescope in the world from 1948 until 1993. It's housed in this beautiful Art Deco-inspired observatory, and uh, it's just a beautiful structure, easily recognizable uh, if you're up in the mountains near Palomar, California. Inside is this, the Hale 5.1 meter telescope, or 200 inch telescope. Uh, the telescope itself is this truss-like structure that is uh, positioned vertically. Uh, the primary mirror is uh, inside the enclosure at the bottom. The secondary mirror is inside the cylinder up at the top. And the reason this structure, this massive structure that you can see going at a diagonal with this strange horseshoe shape uh, toward the right uh, and all this other uh, massive structure is because the mirror itself is very heavy. Uh, so in this image, the telescope itself is in the background and in the foreground is the mirror. It weighs 14 and a half tons. It's almost two feet thick at the outer edge. And that's why this massive truss tube assembly and all of these other uh, massive, large pieces of equipment are required to hold the mirror steady and in place and keep the telescope perfectly balanced. So it's no wonder that the building that it lives in is such a large enclosure. Now, by contrast, here is the Gemini North Telescope. It's 8.2 meters in diameter. It's located at the summit of Mauna Kea, Hawaii. And just by looking at this picture, especially with the uh, truck in the front, uh, in the foreground, you can kind of see that the enclosure is kind of small. It, there isn't that much structure. Well, why is that? Well, when we take a look at the telescope itself, it also seems to have a very simple design. Uh, there is a big mirror there for sure, and it's very heavy, and it does require a large mount, but there's just not that much to it. And telescopes like these did not arrive on the scene until the 1990s, until methods in manufacturing large mirrors uh, really broke through at some time during the 1980s. So this allowed large mirrors to be built far thinner and therefore far lighter uh, than they used to be at the time that the Hale telescope was built. So if you just compare these two telescopes side by side, you could see that even though the Gemini telescope is uh, certainly larger than Hale, uh, it, it just doesn't look like there's that much mass there. It doesn't seem like there's that much stuff. And that's because uh, inch for inch or meter for meter of aperture, there is less stuff required. It's a much lighter mirror overall. So why do we like to build these telescopes as big as we can? Well, what is it about aperture that we really like? Well, remember, it's all about collecting light. And the amount of light that you can collect goes as the area of the aperture. So if we think of the aperture of a mirror as being just the area of a circle, well, that's equal to pi r squared. Or if you prefer to use the, the full aperture, the full diameter, it's pi times the diameter squared divided by 4. So let's just compare this telescope, which is a really modest 8-inch reflecting telescope. Uh, let's compare that to the, uh, to the Mark I eyeball. So we, on the 8-inch telescope, we have an aperture of 200 millimeters. On the eyeball, we have an aperture of 6 millimeters. That's the diameter of the iris. We can just take a ratio of the two. And we'll go ahead and cancel some stuff out here. And now we're left with... 200 squared divided by 6 squared, that is roughly 1,000. In other words, the telescope, this modest 8-inch telescope, can collect about 1,000 times more light than the human eye. So the Gemini North 8.2-meter uh, telescope can collect about 420 times more light than Towson's 0.4-meter telescope. So clearly, more aperture means more light. And in order to achieve that aperture, in order to make these mirrors as large as possible, we use a couple of different construction techniques. The simplest approach is the single mirror design. Uh, using modern techniques, we can build these mirrors to uh, up to about eight and a half meters in diameter. But why use one mirror when you can use two? Uh, this is the large binocular telescope up at Mount Graham in Arizona, and it makes use of two 8.4 meters 
So this is the equivalent of an 11.8 meter telescope. But hey, why use two mirrors when you can use 36? <laughs> so here we're using what's called a segmented design. Uh, these hexagonal mirrors are jigsawed together to form, in this case, a 10 meter telescope. So what we're looking at here is the primary mirror. Those are all the hexagons. And coming out of the primary mirror is the uh, donut hole, you might say. There's the baffle that the light is reflected into. And right on the edge here, it's a little bit out of focus, but if you look along the right-hand side, you're going to see this cage. And inside the cage is the secondary mirror. And that you can see reflected behind the donut hole. And that's what you're seeing reflected in the mirror. So this is a pretty, pretty large telescope. And again, to put this all into perspective, here is the Keck 10-meter mirror uh, segmented out and... There's some folks here to uh, help you show the scale. But hey, why use one of these 36, 36 mirrored mirrors when you can have two? And both of the Keck telescopes, Keck's one and two, they're each 10 meters uh, in aperture, uh, but they are designed under certain circumstances to operate as a single telescope. We can connect the light waves between these two telescopes so that they can operate as though they were a much larger telescope. But why do that with two telescopes when you can do that with four? So here's the very large telescope at Cerro Paranal in Chile. Uh, each telescope is 8.2 meters. And combined with the uh, four 1.8 meter auxiliary telescopes, a very high resolution can be achieved. We can use all eight of these telescopes to act as a single telescope. We can connect all of their light together inside uh, this building in the middle. And we can bring all that light together to simulate a much larger telescope. So aperture matters. Uh, it's The joke is, are we building these telescopes bigger in order to compensate for a certain lack of our anatomy? And the answer is yes, yes, we are. We're building them in order to compensate for the small size of our eyes. Uh, by building these larger, we can achieve much brighter images, which allows us to study objects that are extremely faint, far below the uh, limits that the human eye can see down to. But we can also achieve something called a higher angular resolution. And we're going to learn more about what that means next.